Shalom everyone, it's your boy Brother Kwame And I just want to start off saying that We have an imperative message today In this video we are going to go into the writings of the Apostle Paul See people, the New Testament is composed of letters To the churches written by the Apostle Paul It's a prominent doctrine or a prominent influence in the new testament and a lot of the christian churches they are based and founded upon the one and only apostle paul his writings and in contrary to what any of you people want to believe it is not founded upon the gospel of christ it's founded upon misinterpretations of all of paul's writings and i'm about to show you how the most high purposely put a spirit on Paul to write his letters in a format that would be a stumbling block to those in the last days. And what do I mean by stumbling block? I mean it would be a dividing factor for the people that's going to make it into the kingdom of heaven and for the ones that will go into the lakes of fire. And I'm here to tell you that a lot of people are going to fall into this trap and I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you how he did this and why he did this. And it's going to be very clear by the time we go through this lesson. So I'm going to need you to follow me and be attentive, meaning you're going to have to pay attention and follow me. And I'm sorry to tell you that you're not going to hear your local preacher talking about things like this, about the letters of the Apostle Paul's writings and the danger of using the apostle paul's writings for doctrines of devils because a lot of you people don't know this but the most high god he always put traps throughout the bible and throughout life to find out where your heart is the bible is not a simple book the bible is a spiritual book and i'm here to tell you that the letters of the apostle paul it has nothing to do with the letters per se it has everything to do with your heart on how you're going to try to interpret his letters to do your will and not the most high God's will. So let's deal with this. I'm going to need you people to stick with me and let's push on through. I'm Brother Kwame from the Lion of Judah Teach. And the name of this video is The Trap of Paul's Epistles. Go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 20. Go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 20. And the word of the Lord say, To what purpose cometh there to meet incest from Sheba? And the sweet came from a far country. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices is sweet unto me. Okay, so the Most High, he didn't want, according to the scripture, the Most High God, he didn't want any burnt offerings. He didn't want any of that. Why? Because we were worshiping him with lip service, but we didn't want to keep no commandments or the 613 plus laws. We were playing the role from the outer look like we were playing the role. But within, we weren't keeping no commandments or following anything what the Most High God told us to do. And the sad thing is, we didn't desire to. We wanted to follow everyone else. That's why the Most High God, he laid these stumbling blocks throughout this Bible and throughout life. And I'm going to show you. Watch this. Verse 21. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people you see that the most high says i will you see that i will lay stumbling blocks referring to a future prophecy meaning a future tense now what is a stumbling block a stumbling block is something used to keep you from getting to the destination that you are trying to get to Okay, so everyone is trying to get to the kingdom of heaven. The Most High God says that he's going to put stumbling blocks, meaning things will be in the path of the kingdom in our way. 
Okay, so we know that the Most High God, He will put stumbling blocks. And those stumbling blocks will lead us to the lakes of fire. Watch. And the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. You see that? The Most High God says that these stumbling blocks, meaning plural, meaning there's going to be more than one stumbling block. It's going to be many stumbling blocks. And he's saying that the people, the many people that are going to fall into these stumbling blocks, they are going to perish. Now, remember, it's all because the tensions of your heart. It's your own actions that are going to get you there. And that is the thing that's going to have you fall. Now, we are going to push further into the New Testament. And I'm going to show you Paul, his writings was one of those stumbling blocks. The Most High God purposely put a spirit on Paul to write his letters in a matter just to see if you would keep his commandments or no. That's right, the Most High God, he purposely put it there. And now I'm going to call onto the witness right now, the Apostle Peter, to show you that the Apostle Peter, he himself knew that the writings of Paul was a stumbling block and that it was going to be a lot of people that was going to fall into it to their own death. Their own heart was going to deceive them into these stumbling blocks. Now go with me. Go to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. Go to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15 and the word of the Lord say, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Okay, so this is Peter talking about the brother Paul. Now, let's see what he says about the brother Paul. Verse 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Okay, so what is Peter telling you right now? Now, remember, Peter is the head apostle. Peter was given the keys directly from Christ. He is the head apostle and he is telling you right now. Peter said the brother Paul, he is writing some things in his epistles that are very hard to be understood. Meaning, whenever they were to look at Paul's letters, they are having to examine all of the lines that Paul was writing to find out what he was really saying. Because on the surface, it looks like he's saying one thing, but you have to dig deep to find out exactly what Paul was really saying. And now remember, this was 2,000 years ago, and they were in the same setting as Paul. So you would think that they would understand Paul, or they would have been able to understand Paul a lot better than someone 2,000 years after, which is our time. Now, they were saying that it was hard to understand Paul during that time. So imagine how hard it is for people during this time to understand the writers of Paul. And now today in 2020, you have people creating a whole doctrine out of Paul's epistles. Now follow me, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. What Peter is saying that these are unlearned men and women dabbling in Paul's writings and when he says unlearn, he's saying, meaning you don't know any of the other scriptures. You don't know anything about the laws, the prophets. You don't have any history, biblical history to draw from. And you're trying to dabble with Paul's writings. Peter is saying that this is going to be to your own destruction. That is the stumbling block that the Most High God said that he was going to put out there. 
and Peter is here letting you know that it's going to be a lot of people that's going to fall to their own destruction. Now, why is it your own destruction? Because during the time of judgment, you're not going to come to the stands and say, let me call on Paul. People, you can't call Paul to help you out on the day of judgment. Talking about some Paul said this. No, it's to your own destruction. That's why the Most High God put the spirit on the Apostle Peter to put this in his writings. So there would be no excuse. Now, this is not to say that the Apostle Paul purposely wrote it that way. Paul didn't write that to purposely throw people off. Paul didn't know that his letters that were sent to the churches would be taken and put in books and false doctrines were going to be created out of them. I'm pretty sure that that wasn't Paul's intent to blow up and be a foundation of two point something billion people that was following his writings and don't have a clue with what he's saying. Now, what are we getting ready to do? What I'm about to do is get ready to go in some of these stumbling blocks in the Apostle Paul's writings and show you how the Most High God, he's going to give you two choices with Paul's writings because in Paul's writings sometimes it seems like Paul is telling you to go against certain things but on another scripture he'll tell you don't go against it so the most high God purposely put the spirit on the apostle Paul to write his letter that way just to see where your heart is at now follow me watch this Romans chapter 6 verse 14 and the word of the Lord say for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, this is when you see a Christian jump out of their seats, hollering, Amen! Amen! Praise the Lord! They'll holler, Amen! Quick for this verse. Anytime you have a discussion with a Christian and they want to show you or tell you that the laws of the Most High God are done away with, they're always going to go to the letters of Paul and they're going to try to show and twist Paul's words and try to tell you that, oh, we don't have to keep no laws of the most high God. Brother, we're under grace <laughs> when this has absolutely nothing to do with that. But watch the next verse and see if somebody jump up and say amen to this. Remember, the most high God always gives you two choices. So this one, Romans 6 and 14, sounds like you don't have to keep no commandments of the most high god at all now watch what happens whenever you read the next verse and remember this is all to prove you to see whether your heart is going to allow you to keep the most high god's commandment or simply no now watch this when i read the next verse and we're going to see where your heart is really at romans 6 and 15 and the word of the lord says what then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace god forbid paul is saying shall we sin according to first john 5 verse 3 meaning breaking god's laws so every time you see the word sin that means going against the commandment the same ones the most high god laid out in the first books of moses that is what sin is according to the bible so paul is saying so shall we just start breaking the most high god laws getting up and breaking all of his laws because we're not under the law but under grace god forbid that means no or maybe you'll understand it better when i say it this way that means nope and that is exactly what paul means you're absolutely not supposed to be doing that no you don't use grace as an excuse just to start breaking god's laws so now you have to reevaluate the verse prior. You got to find out, so what does he mean by this? He's not saying that you don't have to keep the law. And I'm about to give you an example. What does it mean when you're not under the law, you are under grace? Okay, so when Christ and the disciples, and it was the Sabbath day, and they were hungry, they started picking the corn. Okay, so it is unlawful to do any work according to the law on the sabbath day but since these brothers were hungry they were exercising grace people the most high god is not some robot up in the sky and doesn't have any intellectual capacity 
people the most high god he understands if somebody's hungry and it's the sabbath day brother get some food especially if you have been preaching the gospel at the time you was preaching the word and you didn't have any time to prepare food brother get some food that is what he means when he says you're under grace see the law says that you can't do nothing see if you were under the law that means that you will be sitting there looking like a fool you'll be sitting there looking like a fool with your stomach growling you looking around waiting for the sun to go down this is what he means when he says that you're not under the law you are under grace see whenever you read romans chapter 6 verse 15 shall we sin because we are not under the law Christ and them wasn't grabbing corn and bundling up to go sell it at the market next week. See, Christ wasn't just using grace as an excuse to start breaking the Most High God's laws for no reason. It was a reason why they had to extend the law on the Sabbath. They had to go outside of the boundaries on the sabbath day because them brothers was hungry you're not going to just sit there on a sabbath day and you see somebody dying on the floor and you're going to say brother it's the sabbath day i'm sorry i can't do any work and you're supposed to be a doctor or oh, i can't do no work i gotta wait till the sun to go down and when the sun drop then i can go ahead and help you people that's just ignorant this is what he means by when he says that you are not under the law but under grace people the law is not made to have somebody in a cage it's a guideline see sometimes things happen when you might have to go outside the guideline but then you come right back in you go right back into the guidelines and start keeping the commandments that is all paul is saying when he says that you are not under the law but under grace that's it it's as simple as that the laws of the most high god are not done away with and the thing is, this concept of grace is not something new and it wasn't invented by Paul. It's not something that Paul just woke up one day and said, you know what, grace. People, you can read about grace all throughout the whole Old Testament. All the way back in Genesis, you can read about grace. That is why you're not supposed to be dealing with the letters of Paul until you have the whole full understanding of the previous chapters before you even get to the apostle paul this is the last section of the bible that you are supposed to be dealing with that is why peter told you that it's going to be unto your own destruction and the most high god he wants to know where your heart is really at now jump me jump me to the book of galatians chapter 5 verse 17 jump me to the book of galatians chapter 5 verse 17 and the word of the lord say for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would okay so paul is telling you that the flesh and the spirit it is a war going on they're contrary the flesh is the one that wants to come do all of the lust and the despicable things but the spirit inside wants to do something contrary and what it's referring to really is keeping the most high god's commandments see the spirit wants to keep god's commandments but the lust of the flesh is trying to tell you to go and do something else verse 18 but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law this once again is when you see the christians fly up out of their seat with a big a man they say see brother i am led of the spirit i'm not under no law i don't have to follow the laws of god i can do whatever i want because i'm under the spirit i don't have to keep no law i'm led of the spirit okay well brother charles didn't I just see your car pulling out of the strip club, Magic City? Did the spirit lead you there? Uh, uh, hum it, hum it, hum it, No, did the spirit lead you there? Now I gotta ask you, what spirit are you led by? Because you just said that you are led by the spirit. Well, what spirit? Because there are many spirits. He's not, or Charles, brother Charles is not talking about the spirit of Christ because the apostle Paul is talking about the spirit of Christ. If you are led by the spirit of Christ, you're not under the law. 
And that is the same example that we already gave in the last verse in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14 through 15. You're not going to be under the law. If you're led by the spirit of Christ, you're going to be doing the things already the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is already going to tell you to keep the most high God's commandments. So you don't have to just go through the whole Old Testament, learning all of the 613 laws and just be bound by a law. Because the spirit already, if you already have the spirit of Christ manifested inside of you, you are going to be keeping the commandments already. Now, John me to verse 19 and the word of the Lord say, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now, Paul is about to tell you what the works of the flesh are. And now you're going to find out what spirit are you led by? Watch adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulation wrath strife addition heresies envying murderers drunkenness revelings uh guess what people all of these comes from the law so that's telling you if you're doing any of these things you're not led by the spirit of Jesus Christ, not the Jesus Christ of the Bible that Brother Kwame serves. All of these things comes from the law, the witchcraft, all of this stuff that you're not supposed to be doing, dabbling in stuff. And they all come from the law. Paul is telling you right now, if you're doing these in the flesh, you're not led by the spirit of Christ. He's speaking in cold. Remember, Paul is speaking to uh, a, a whole bunch of people that has a high intellectual capacity and they have a similar amount of knowledge that Paul does regarding the law. So if you're doing this, you're not led by the spirit of Christ. With the spirit of Christ, you're going to be keeping the laws and the commandments and you're not going to be doing these things. That is what Paul is saying. He's not saying that you don't have to keep no commandments because you are led by the spirit. What spirit? Let's continue to read of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Paul is letting you know here, if you're not keeping God's commandments, you can forget about getting into the kingdom of the most high God. You can not forget about it. That is what Paul is letting you know. Okay, so the most high God, he put the spirit on Paul to put that verse there. The one that's saying, if you being led by the spirit, you're not under the law. He put that right there on purpose. And then he gave you a choice at the bottom of it. And that's as you keep reading God is saying, let me see which one are these people are going to pick. Let me see where their heart is really at. That is what the most high God is doing. He's sitting back looking. Most people are going to stick right at that. Oh, I'm led by the spirit. I don't need to do anything else. I'm led by the spirit, brother. I don't know about you, but I'm led by the spirit. I don't have to do anything else. Yep. Even though that spirit that they are led by got them doing all kind of wickedness all types of wickedness they are going to sit there and tell you that they are led by the spirit and they're not going to continue reading down and getting the full understanding of what this spirit is talking about people like i said at the beginning of this video this is what the most high god is dealing with the most high god is dealing with stumbling blocks and this is one of them it's plenty of stumbling blocks in the writers of paul that you should not be dabbling with if you don't have a clear foundation in the old testament that is what the most high god is dealing with if you don't have a clear understanding about keeping the commandments from genesis all the way up until the time of christ everyone told you that you had to keep the commandments how all of a sudden you jump to paul and paul preaches another gospel i don't understand that paul preaches another gospel from everyone else i don't get that all of a sudden paul preaches another whole gospel that you won't find anywhere else in the bible but see the thing is it's not that the apostle paul is teaching another gospel it's that you're choosing to not want to hear to what paul is really saying and you don't have the knowledge to break down what paul is saying so the Most High God has a stumbling block there for you and for the rest of all the other people who are going to get trapped into Paul's writings.
You see what I'm saying? The Most High God want to know where your heart is at. That is what it all boils down to. He want to see where the children of men's heart is at. God wants to know the inner thoughts of each man. So he left these writings of Paul there purposely. Out of all the books and scriptures that we no longer have anymore, he purposely left all of these writings of the Apostle Paul there purposely. Everybody is trying to run to scriptures and other books that we no longer have anymore when they clearly don't understand the writings of the Apostle Paul. They still don't understand his writings. Paul had a spirit on him by the Most High God to write in this format. And God really want to know what each and one of you is about. People, that's why the Bible says that broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many are going to go into that. But the gate that leads to the kingdom of heaven, he says, few are going to find it. Because the stumbling block that the Most High God put out, everyone is going to fall over that. So right now is your opportunity. You have to take this video and listen to it, be attentive to it, and use these as tools to not fall into the stumbling blocks. I'm telling you right now, you have to keep the commandments of the Most High God and follow Christ. That is your ticket to the of the kingdom of heaven. There's no other way. There is no other way. Anything that is going to get you against that because of your misunderstanding of the scriptures, leave it alone. You might not have a full understanding of it and it's taking you into a different path. With that being said, with the next few videos, I'm going to be presenting more scriptures about the stumbling blocks from the Apostle Paul. So your spirit has to be pure. Your heart has to be pure so you can be able to want to awaken that spirit so it can overtake the flesh. Well, with that being said, it's your boy, Brother Kwame from the Lion of Judah Teach, and I am out, Shalom.